Hello and welcome to today's webinar. This is a CAMWorks 201 webinar. This is uh, another installment of Go Engineers continuing webinar series on the variety of solutions that we offer. Today we're going to be looking at CAMWorks and we're going to be looking at it in a, a little bit deeper view than the CAMWorks 101 series webinars. The agenda for today is we're going to start out with a part that requires a custom tool to program. So we're going to go over creating that tool, reading it into the technology database, programming with that tool, and then also saving that custom strategy so that we can pick out that tool easier and simpler in the future. Uh, that's going to lead us into a, a deeper look at the technology database. The technology database, as many users know, is going to be the kind of master of ceremonies for CAMWorks. It's the database that sits in the background and it keeps track of how you guys machine parts, what sorts of tools you have in your shop, the custom strategies that you want to use. So we're going to be taking a closer look at that and kind of familiarize yourself with the database because in order to be a good CAMWorks programmer, it's extremely important to be familiar with how the database works what it looks like, what you can do in the TechDB, and what you can't do in the TechDB. So that's going to be the agenda for today. We'll keep this webinar fairly short. We're shooting for around a half an hour. It is a webinar, so all of the viewers are muted. Uh, I am open to questions, though. So right there in the GoToMeeting question bar, you have the ability to answer or ask questions or uh, type into the chat window as well. I will be keeping an eye on these periodically throughout the webinar, but we'll probably get to the questions and chats at the end. If you have anything that uh, you're curious about how I did it, or if I skipped through something a little bit too quickly, feel free to, to type it in there and we can revisit it at the end. So that's the agenda for today. We'll bump over here into SOLIDWORKS. And we'll take a look at this part I created. This is kind of a, a swept boss of, of sorts, and it has some grooves along the side. We're going to be cutting those grooves with a custom form tool, cutting both grooves at once. We're also actually going to take a look at how to save uh, the stock as an STL file so that we can get a really nice um, comparison of the part as it's cut as it is modeled inside SOLIDWORKS and an inaccurate depiction of, of the stock here as well. So right off the bat, I know I'm going to be cutting this with a form tool. I'm just going to take a form tool and I'm going to sweep it down the side. So the first thing I need to do is create that form tool. It's going to create a little, it's going to be a little bit of work on the SOLIDWORKS side, but uh, we should be able to do this. So I'm going to use the existing SOLIDWORKS model to create the form tool. I'm going to draw a sketch on this face. Use the convert entities tool to read in the edges of that face into my sketch. And now I'm going to kind of piggyback off this sketch to create a sketch for my form tool. So right off the bat, what I'm going to want to do is to create a form tool, I have to create a sketch first and then a revolved feature from that sketch. So I'm going to start drawing some lines here. And I think I'm going to take the bottom of the tool at the bottom edge of that. Maybe something like this. And I'm going to trim away the excess that I don't need. And I'm going to start adding some sketch relations by control clicking entities and adding sketch relations. Sketch relations are extremely important for, for good solid uh, sketches. They allow you to uh, dictate or make rules on the sketch without actually adding dimensions. It helps create more robust sketches. And now I am going to add some dimensions on this tool or this sketch. So this would actually be the radius of our tool. We'll say it's about half inch radius. That looks like a good size here. And then on the height of the tool, that looks like about four inches will do. So this sketch, I've created it inside the part I want to cut. I'm actually going to box select all of the sketch entities, hit Control C and copy this, and I'm going to exit this sketch, and, and maybe I'll name this sketch 
custom tool. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new part. Draw on the front plane, create a sketch, and now I'm going to hit Control V and paste my sketch in into this new part. Now I lost a lot of the the entities. A lot of our sketch is blue, and and we'll 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 accept that for now. So it's not a fully defined sketch. The last thing I need to do here is that CamWorks requires that a sketch for a custom tool to be centered on the origin of the part file. And so I need to use some move tools. Move sketch. I'm going to box select all the entities I want to move. And I'm going to use this from to option along the left hand side there. And that's going to let me pick a point and move it from and to. All right. And then the last thing I need to do here is actually mirror this. I don't need to do it. I'm just I'm used to drawing things in the in the positive quadrant here. So I'm not going to copy it. I'm just going to mirror it and there we go. Now, if I if I was actually going to use this tool further on, I would come back in and, and add a lot of the sketch relations I lost. Like these would be collinear, these uh, entities would all be the same size, they would all be equal. I probably should at least add a dimension here. We'd want to fully define our sketch just like we would inside SOLIDWORKS. And uh, we'll leave this driving, or make it driven. That was a duplicate there. Don't need that. OK, but that's the whole idea. Is we, we're using this, the, the model here to kind of piggyback and create a sketch for a custom part here. So the last thing I need to do is create a revolve feature. And here's the shape of my custom tool. So now it's time to save it. We're going to actually save it in the CamWorks toolbar along the top here. CamWorks toolbar. My toolbar might look a little bit different than yours because I have rearranged some, some buttons and I've uh, made it easier for me to use. But uh, you'll be able to find the button as well. It's called the user defined tool slash holder button. And it's going to show me a preview of the tool that it's going to create. And I am going to be creating a mill tool as opposed to a mill holder or a turn insert. And it's going to let me browse to where I want to save this. Usually you want to save this in this directory here. The C CamWorks data, CamWorks 2014 tooling M tools folder. This would be kind of pre-populated with the files that you see here. These are pre-loaded custom tools. And this is a default directory for your custom tools. So I tend to save mine here. I am going to name this uh, the double slot tool. And maybe I will give it a size as well. One inch double slot. So that is actually saving the tool file. That creates a CamWorks tool file. At this point, I could save this SOLIDWORKS file, but I don't have to. Let's bump up over here. Uh, we're going to hide this sketch. So I've created the tool file. Now I actually have to read it into the CamWorks database. So it's not enough just to create the file and put it in a folder. You actually have to go into the TechDB and add and create this custom tool. So we've just created the geometry of it. We actually haven't created the tool. So this is going to be the first peek into the TechDB today. Uh, there's a couple different ways to enter the TechDB. Uh, many of you might have a technology database button in the top toolbar. In the CamWorks dropdown, there's also a technology database entry there. And then you can also get there through the Windows Start menu under Start, All Programs, CamWorks 2014, TechDB. So they all come to the same place. You get a window that looks like this. This is Microsoft Access. The TechDB is a Microsoft Access uh, database. So if you haven't looked into the database before, I definitely encourage you to at least open it. Uh, maybe be careful about what you click, what you uh, change, until you kind of have an idea of what uh, sort of effects those changes might have. Because it is very simple to make a change in here that can kind of get lost or overlooked and then kind of come back later 
and you don't know what happened. So we're going to we're going to come back into this towards the end of the webinar here and, and, and look at some more specific stuff. But for right now, we're going to be creating this tool. So that's going to be under tooling. Here's all of our different types of tools, our point to point tools, end mills, tapered end mills, threading, mill to turn tooling. There's also this form cutters and form cutters is going to be form cutters of all different shapes and also the user defined tools. User defined tools is going to bring up this menu here. At the bottom of this entry, if we click on the star, it will create a, a new row. Check this box. We're going to give this a name, Let's say one inch double slot. And again, one inch double slot. Now the rest of these parameters, I'm just going to leave it one for right now. And I'll show you where this is going to come back to me. Uh, realistically, I want to be a little bit more accurate as, as in terms of my cutting diameter, my shank diameter, um, my flute length and whatnot. Uh, cutting diameter is, is an important one and I just happen to draw mine at one inch and it's already there. But the rest of these I'm going to tweak later. I'll choose a tool material, we'll say carbide, and a comment. Again, I'll say one inch double slot. Now, this is where we actually browse to that file. This little tiny folder button along the right hand side. Click that and it's going to allow us to browse to that file we just saved. It's double slot file. And we will close this. So now that is actually us creating a custom tool and reading it into the database. So now this will actually end up as a, in, our, in our tool crib search filter. So before I start programming this, I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, well, if I were to start programming this now, the stock would look like this, right? Uh, we, we, if you're watching this, we've probably been using Camworks already. The stock's going to be this minimum bounding box. Okay. When I, I could program it to this and, and the code would look fine, but when I go to simulate this, the simulation is, is going to be hard to see because the tool is only going to remove the material that it passed through. And if I want to get a good representation of that, uh, simulation and actually be able to see what it's doing, I want to be able to have an accurate stock as well. So I'm going to quickly create an STL stock file. Okay, so my stock file, I want it to look the exact same as this part, except I don't want the slots in it. So I'm, again, I'm going to draw a sketch on this face. Use the Convert Entities tool. I'm going to trim away the slots. And I'm going to use the Extend Entities to extend this line down. So now we have a sketch that's basically just the outer perimeter of this. And I'm going to use that sketch to create a Sweat Boss. The first sketch I already had pre-selected is the profile. And the next sketch or edge I'm going to select is this bottom edge of the part. And it's just going to sweep that profile and kind of fill in those slots. Okay. Now I'm going to do a Save As here. And I'm going to change the Save As type to STL file. Now when you're doing this, and if you're going to read it in an STL file as your camwork stock, it's extremely important to go into the options menu and check this box, the do not translate STL output data to positive space. Because what that does is it, it takes your STL that may be drawn in, in whatever orientation inside SOLIDWORKS. It takes that STL and it transforms it or moves it into positive X, positive Y, positive Z. And when you read it in as your stock, now no longer does it line up with the part you want to cut. So it's important to click this, do not translate. I already had it clicked, so let's save this. And now I'm going to suppress that feature I just created, so Camworks no longer sees it. 
and we'll quickly come into the stock manager, choose this STL file type, and it's going to let me browse to that STL that I just saved. If you have multiple coordinate systems in your STL file, it's important that you click the correct one here. And it's also important that whatever units you save that STL file with, you have selected here as well. So ideally, when you hit open here, the preview of the part will turn teal. And that's the preview of the stock. So basically, we're, what we're seeing here is the stock is perfectly overlapping the part, which is exactly what we wanted. OK. So now I'm going to create my mill part setup. And remember, mill part setup is just the direction that you're machining from. I'm going to create my two and a half axis feature. And the feature we're going to use is this open profile feature. So Camworks has quite a few two and a half axis features, you know, flat bottom stuff, pockets, holes, slots, bosses. One of these features is called Open Profile, and Open Profile allows you to pick sketches or edges that are open, so non-intersecting, uh, not looped, open, and run a tool along that edge that you select. So I'm going to click the bottom edge of the bottom slot here. So this would be the bottom edge of my feature. And I'm, it's going to want to know how deep I'm going to reverse the direction. And when it comes to how deep it is in this particular instance, I could make it uh, pretty much as shallow as I wanted uh, or as deep as I wanted. Because what we're going to do is we're going to kind of override the depths here to force it to do a single depth in Z. And so it doesn't really matter if I make it, uh, say, this deep or this deep. Okay. And then the strategy. I have fine, coarse, tapered, wrapped. I do have a strategy in there called keyway that I believe I saved last week. A keyway strategy would be similar to what we're doing right now. Um, we're gonna choose fine for, for right now and we'll save our own using the custom. So I'm gonna go ahead and select finish and close. I'll run this through the database. And when I run that through the database or when I generate my operation plan, it, it, it peeks into the tech DB and it finds the matching entry for this particular feature. The stuff that it looks at is the feature type, the size, the depth, the material group that we're cutting from, and the strategy that I chose, in this case, fine. And it created this contour mill with a one inch flat end mill. This is not what I want exactly. So we'll come in and we'll make some changes here. Under the tool, I'm gonna to go to the tool crib and that custom tool is not yet in my tool crib because I didn't add it to the tool crib. I just added it to my tool library. And the tool crib is a subset of the library. So we do need to add it. We'll search for user defined tools. And here it is. Right at the bottom of the list that I added it before in the tech DB. So we'll go ahead and add that temporarily to the tool crib, select the tool. And now look, because I in the, in the tech DB, because I was a little bit lazy about some of the numbers that I input, or really I didn't input any numbers, this is where it, it kind of comes back and, and, and bites me. So some of these numbers are correct and some of them aren't. And so I'll just come in and, and adjust a few of them here. The overall length will bump up to four inches is what we had. The shoulder length will be about one, uh, sorry, three. So that gives us something to hold on to, and I think that will be good for now. The flute length also should be about three. Okay. So if I hit preview here, this is getting close to what we want. You can see the tool is just coming in and, and following this curve, but it's doing too many passes in Z. And because we have a form cutter, it's, it's really important that we do just one pass in Z, but we can do multiple in X, Y. So let's over, let's control the depth here. So under the contour tab, we have the depth parameters. I'm just going to set these to say five inches. I know my tool can't cut five inches, but the tool is not going to cut five inches. The tool is going to cut up to five inches, which means really the tool is going to go to the bottom of my feature and it won't go any deeper. So I can be kind of arbitrarily large here. 
Awesome. So now I have one pass in Z. If I want multiple passes in XY, under the settings tab, I'm telling it the previous or the cut amount is 50 thousandths. So the XY cut amount is 50 thousandths. And it thinks that the previous allowance was 50 thousandths. So it, it can do it all in one cut. So we can kind of lie to it. We could we could come in and, and uh, force it to do, say, four passes. We could also force a final cut amount that's that's uh, thinner, say five thousandths of final cut amount. We'll preview this. And now we get more passes in XY. So it kind of steps in. The last thing I'd probably want to do is get a lead in here, a lead in and a lead out, because of the way the tool's plunging down, it's going to gouge this corner. So let's add some lead ins and some lead outs. Parallel is usually a good choice for this sort of operation. Inch and a half long. That will get the tool stepped out. And then also my NC planes could be adjusted as well because my clearance plane is way up there. So we might base it on the top of the feature. Now it's not feeding quite so far down. So I like that, that's pretty good. If we simulate this, when I hit the simulate button, look at the shape of the stock. That is the reason why I took the time to save out that STL file and read it in as the stock. Because now when I simulate this and I watch the tool do its job, bump up the speed, let it do its thing. Okay, so it's making its cut. Couple passes in Z. And now, you know, it's not hidden. This is this is great. This is exactly what I wanted to do. It wasn't a lot of extra time to save out that STL file, but now I can zoom in and I can get full view of what's happening. And when I run my comparison, it's going to show exactly where I'm cut. Let's bump up the quality here. That comparison was showing way too many colors. So that's one thing to keep in mind if, again, if you're kind of new to the simulation or new to CamWorks. Simulate can be used for different reasons. You can simulate a, a very rough simulation just to make sure your tool is getting to where it needs to be to make sure that you're not missing pockets or holes or slots or anything like that. You might bump down the resolution on the simulation in that regard because, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be very fine. If you're going to use your simulation as more as of a predictor of how well you're cutting, then you might want to bump the resolution up a bit. So that's creating a custom tool, programming to the custom tool. The last part of this step that I wanted to show you was saving this as a custom strategy so I can use it again in the future. So to save a custom strategy, I, I, I essentially am saving everything associated with the file, with the feature. So I come back to the feature. I do a right click and save operation plan. I'm going to create a new feature condition here and I'm going to give it a new name. And I might name this the double slot type strategy. So when I choose this in the future, if it finds this entry, which these are the different parameters it's looking at, if it finds this entry, it's automatically going to pull in that double slot tool. It's going to pull in my depths of cut, my side passes, my lead ins, my NC planes, it's going to pull all of that in. So this is kind of what it's showing you that it's saving. So just to show that real quick, if I were to recreate this, I'll recreate this feature. It's an open profile, that bottom edge to that edge. And then now I have that double slot option in my strategy. When I run this through the database, it gives me exactly what I had before. Okay, So let's take a quick peek at what it is saving in the database. If you go to the Feature Options tab, there's a TechDB ID button with a number, and that number is the entry in the database that pertains to that particular feature. So when you click that, it actually opens up the database and shows you where you are. So here's something to keep in mind. When you're saving stuff back to the database, it saves uh, the exact specifications of the feature that you tied it to originally. So if we look at this row here, this is the 
the row that we just created. Our feature type was an open profile. The subtype is blind. The strategy is that double slot that we created. The stock material group is set to low carbon alloys. Where if we look at some of these other entries, a lot of them are set to all. And if you set them to all, that means you can use it for any material. Um, it's set right now to low carbon alloys because that's what I had selected as my stock material. So if I want to use this more, I could come in here and I could say, you know what, I actually want to use it for all. So I'm going to make the specifications more broad. Same thing goes for the depth and the width. Notice these numbers are very precise, where some of these other ones are 0 to 1,000. 0 to 1,000 gives you a broad range, so you can use that particular entry for a wide range of features. In this particular entry, my part, my feature was only 2.3 inches wide, so it created that. Which means if I went in, if I left this unchanged and I went in and tried to create um, a double slot feature that was larger than the one I just saved, it wouldn't work. So typically I'll come in here and I'll bump these numbers up as well for the width and the depth. And that way I can use it for any feature in the future. Now that doesn't have to happen. Uh, it's just how I like to set up my database. Some people set up databases with very wide ranges. And some people set up databases with uh, very narrow ranges. And they feel like they have a little bit more control over what it's going to do. And, and there's some truth to that. So when it finds this entry, it come, the CamWorks comes down here and it says, okay, well, I'm going to create this contour mill with this tool at this depth. And that's where it gets the contour mill. And, and if we click into this button here, we can see all of the parameters that we saved, like our, our cut amount. This tool that we selected, it's calling out the specific tool that we used, saying use this double slot tool. What you'll find here, if you take a peek at what's going on in some of these default entries, especially the entries with very wide ranges, say for the width of the feature, if the width is set up to use anywhere from zero to a thousand inches wide, sometimes when it goes to select a tool, it will actually use an expression because you can use an expression based on the width of the feature, some mathematical uh, operation, say multiply by one, uh, and a, you'll create an, a, that's a lower bound, and then you create an upper bound, you know, times one. And now you're saying, go to your tool crib, choose a tool diameter that's between uh, one and 0.95 times the width of the feature. So it's actually looking at the size of the feature and trying to base the tool size on that. That's another way to set up your tool crib. For right now, I'm just selecting this tool because I only have one double slot tool. But if I was just using a regular end mill or something like that, I might set up an, an expression. So now this is widened up. I can use those for all sorts of features in the future. Real quickly, I know we clicked the button in the feature options tab to take us directly to that window. If we were to open up the TechDB ourselves, you'd find that window under Mill, Features and Operations, Features and Operations. That's how you get to this. So then you would choose your feature type and you could get there from there. Let's go a step back. We'll continue in Mill. One thing you guys might want to do if you haven't done it yet is come into the machine window here. Type in your machine name. If you have a Haas VF3, type that in here. You know, you could type it in here as well. We got our VF3. Select a default post from the list of posts that you have installed. That way when you pick your machine, it picks your post processor for you. Under the turret, tab, you can also pick a default tool crib. So right now, these are just default cribs. You got crib one through four. You might have different cribs for different machines. So if you pick a crib in this window here, it's going to tie it to that machine. So when you pick, when you pick a, uh, a machine, it picks a tool crib for you. Okay. So let's head back into Camworks here. 
And speaking of tool cribs, if oh, I get asked all the time, how, what's the best way to manage my tool crib or edit my tool crib? The best way to do it is not in the tech DB, but it's actually right here in the machine parameters window. There's my little Haas VF3 I just saved. In the tool crib tab, choose, choose the tool crib you're looking at, crib one, two, three, hit select. Okay, it's going to show you the tool crib. From this window, you can highlight and edit or remove tools. You can also add tools to the tool crib and you can save it here. So this is a great interface to manage your tool crib. Until you hit save tool crib, any changes you make just kind of reside in that one part file. But when you hit save, it actually saves it back to the database, and you never have to go into the database, which is which is kind of nice because it can get uh, overwhelming in there. Last thing I wanted to talk about today was multi-stepped holes, because multi-stepped holes, uh, it, you know, since we're on the topic of the TechDB and, and custom strategies multi-stepped holes are a great topic. So I'm going to open up one of the just example files that comes with Camworks. Looks something like this. And I'll just quickly run the mach uh, extract machinable features, the feature recognition, let it do its thing. For this particular part, it comes up with a whole wide range of features. But what I'm curious about are at the very bottom these multi-stepped holes. And that's these down here. So a multi-stepped hole in Camworks terms, it's like a counterboard hole with at least an extra counterbore. Um, it, it's holes with several different what we call cylinders. So it might have, you know, steps, multi-step. So in this one we have a first counterbore, we have a chamfer right here, another counterbore down here, and there you go. So if you guys have ran the feature recognition out of the box and it's found multi-stepped holes, uh, it runs it through the database and you get all sorts of crazy results, right? So if I, I come in here, I run this feature, just this one feature through the database, it's saying the machining depth is is defined as zero here a bunch of times. And all it did was it created a center drill and a drill. That's all it did. And that's obviously not going to cut this. Okay. If I switch this over to, if I switch my units over to inches and re-generate this operation plan, Let's regenerate the features here. So by switching the units, I'm actually telling it to look at a different database because there's a metric and there's a, an imperial database. And so when I ran it through the metric database, all I did was I got um, a center drill and a drill. When I run it through this imperial database, I think I'm going to get something else. Let's quickly reopen this. and change the units right away. I want you guys to see the output from the Imperial database because it's even crazier. Where in the metric, we just got that center drill and the drill. But in the Imperial database, we're gonna get thread mills. We're gonna get all sorts of stuff. And you guys are gonna get those too. And the reason is, um, to kind of wrap this up into a nutshell, is that there's only a certain set number of multi-step strategies in the database. So if we look again at this multi-stepped hole, in the parentheses here we see it, the strategy is named MSH1 inch. So it's saying multi-stepped hole one, number one. If we double click into this, we can get a little bit info about what it found, and these are the cylinders I was talking about. It found cylinders or, or counter bores and the chamfer, it's giving you the size of them. And here's the two strategies we have, number one and number two. Number one, by default, it's crazy. It's a crazy strategy. So let's, let's get that out of the database. Look at what it created. A center drill, a drill, a roughing, another drill, a roughing, and two thread mills. 
That's nuts. And you guys have, may have seen this. You know, if you guys have ever encountered a multi-stepped hole and all of a sudden it's creating thread mills, this is what you're encountering. So where am I getting at here? Well, we we took a look at the tech DB. We saw kind of how a strategy affects what happens, what comes out of the tech DB. Um, we talked about different feature types. We talked about saving strategies. The multi-step tools work a little bit different. And so I think it's important to understand that. So this is something you, um, for multi-step holes, if it's a geometry that you cut often, it's worth it to come in and a save a custom multi-step hole strategy. If it's something you don't cut very often, normally what I'll do is I'll just delete that multi-step hole feature and I'll just manually create features on my own, several different features. It might be a pocket, a hole, another pocket, depending on how I want to cut it, I'll just do it manually. But if this is a particular port or something I'm going to cut often, I'll go in and I'll save a custom multi-step hole strategy. So in the database, under mill, features and operations, multi-step holes, this MSH1 entry is what we're looking at. And so you see here's that center drill, drill, rough. This is what it created, right? And look at the parameters. It's looking at the diameters of the holes and it's telling it do a center drill for this based on this diameter down to the bottom of the first cylinder and use this tool. And so it's got all sorts of different steps based on what cylinder or what step it's looking at, telling it to go, you know, down to the bottom of the first cylinder or down to the bottom of the second cylinder. So every single step is very finely tuned. Okay. Uh, if this is the default down here at the bottom, there's a record arrow. Click that. MSH2 strategy is just the two drilling. If you guys don't like these, you can delete a whole strategy by clicking this box on the left-hand side, that box that just turned black, and hitting the delete key. That's how you delete a strategy. And then you can create your own uh, multi-stepped hole strategy. So I think really the intent is that you would always create, if you're going to be cutting multi-stepped holes often, you would always be creating a multi-step hole custom strategy. And you'd be looking at the different cylinders you have to cut and setting up a tool for each one, setting up the depth for each one. If there's any question about how to do that, which there should be because I haven't explained how to do it, there's a help button right here that opens up the help for this particular window. And it's going to walk you through an example on how you would do that. Okay, so multi-step holes are extremely, extremely helpful and ex extremely efficient Efficient if they're customized. If they're not, they're confusing because you end up with, well, you end up with all sorts of tools tied to a particular hole that aren't going to cut it. Okay? So if you're going to use those, customize a strategy. If you're not going to use them, just, uh, you know, tell it, you can tell Camworks in the Camworks options not to find multi-stepped holes and, or if you leave it, if it finds it, just delete it and manually create those features. Okay, so with that, it about covers everything I wanted to cover today. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this Camworks 201 webinar. Uh, again, this is a monthly thing, so uh, exactly a month from now, we'll be doing another webinar. I haven't decided the topic yet, but uh, you know we'll get that invite out to you. Thank you guys for coming. My name is Tyler Reed. I'm the Camworks Product Specialist here at Go Engineer. Feel free to email me if you guys have any questions about what you saw uh, or any questions about things you'd like to uh, know about or any suggested topics that you guys would like to see as well. Mm -hmm.